is the busiest year for the Jane Mensah-led Electoral Commission of Ghana. As the December polls close in, the cloud of mistrust against them thickens. The EC is fending off public calls for an external review of the voter register. The single most important document which will determine the leadership of this country after January 6, 2025, in a more than a half dozen page response to the NDC, and by extension, the people of Ghana, the elections management body explained why that will not happen. On Hot Issues today, we explore if their response should end the debate, or perhaps the commission has something to hide. I am Kamini Amano, and in this edition, I sit with the Deputy Chairperson of the Electoral Commission of Ghana in charge of corporate services, Dr. Eric Bosman Asari. Doc, you're welcome to Hot Issues. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a while. Indeed, it has. Mm -hmm. On the subject of the credibility of the voter register, the Electoral Commission has responded to the NDC insisting that there is no need for a forensic you know, audit of the register. Why so? Uh, we, we, we've, we've maintained that all along largely because the, the CI we are using for registration, which is CI 91 as amended by CI 126. When you look at regulations 23 and regulations 24, both two regulations provide a proper framework for auditing the voters register. And those processes have not been exhausted. So as a commission, we know that it is what the law allows. So we need to use that to be able to ensure that we have a register that is clean, that is robust, that is credible for the 2024 general election. Mm. We use that same procedure or that same approach to be able to clean the register in 2020. So we are not doing something which is so uh, strange or something which has not been done before. But when you look at the two regulations, 23, 24, they spell out what you do after registration. The law is very clear that after you have registered people, you have to display the register. Because re when you do registration, you are gathering raw data, raw data from the field. Mm -hmm. So but the exhibition is a process of cleaning. So the law allows that, assuming somebody indicated that I wanted to vote at this place and my name did not appear in that particular place, that person should be put in that particular polling station. Assuming somebody's name, somebody who registered, but still the name did not appear, the law allows for what is called inclusion. Mm. And there may be some who may not be qualified, but they were able to register. The law allows those people's names to be objected from the register. So mm. what the commission has maintained, which we have not departed from, is that the register is a solid uh, document. It's very, very credible. It's very, very authentic. The register is a good one, but the auditing is being done through the exhibition process. I and see. this is something that the law has provided for. I, I, and we'll go into the nitty gritties of that. But your response to the NDC is coming nine days after, you know, they officially petitioned you at your offices here in the, in, in, in the greater Accra region and indeed across the country. Why did it take you so long to respond? You know, uh, the time they were having, uh, uh, the, uh, they, they had the, uh, the peaceful demonstration, we have just finished our uh, nomination exercise. Mm -hmm. And when you do the nominations, you go through a lot of uh, processes. You have to review uh, the documents, all those, the candidates brought, uh, the presidential as well as even the parliamentary at the constituency level. So all these were activities being undertaken by the Electoral Commission. And you know, we had to announce that some people had qualified uh, to proceed to the next stage, which is becoming candidates for president and others were uh, equally uh, not successful or they were disqualified. So as a commission, we've, we've been doing a lot of things. So mm -hmm. I think that even within these nine days, we've done well to be able to put these comprehensive uh, responses mm -hmm. together, which I think that any, anyone who reads it will realize that this is a commission that really means Mm. Uh, good for the people of this country and for the advancement of our electoral democracy. I see, but um, so if the commission had a lot to do, uh, would, it, would it then be the case that you didn't have time to go through uh, the NDC's petition? Reason your position has not changed. 
No, you know, when you, when you look at NDC's petition and the responses we have provided, we've looked at each item. So all the responses have been provided. And there's a reason why I was making the point that anyone who reads, if you have read the petition by the NDC and you read the responses uh, proffered by the commission, you realize that everything has been tackled. And Indeed. I believe but, that... But the point I'm making is that when I read, and I have read your, um, your response to the NDC, it would appear that you have just regurgitated in print what you read during your news conference in response to the original demands from you. I, don't, I think this is, this, this is completely uh, different, largely because uh, this one, we've gone to, into some specifics. Okay. And some of the legal... Uh, provisions in our uh, in, in our CI, so we've gone into specific. Well, they had some uh, items that were listed. For example, they were talking about using the provisional register for the nomination process, which we've responded based on what the law says. So I mm. think that the uh, commission has done a very uh, decent job. Indeed. And, so th and that's why I want us to look at some of the issues that have been raised here. First, you start off that, you know, the the law makes provision for a process for the register to be clean, clean yes. which is the exhibition process. Yes. But it is the same process that the NDC has, uh, has raised questions about because they do not think that the exhibition process is bringing out the issues that they have identified, the issues that they think need attention. And so the question they're asking is, what are you hiding? No, uh, Kevin, we are not hiding anything. The reality is this. When you, look at, when you look at voter registration, when you register people, for those who do research, you are going to the field to gather raw data. So when you gather this information, what you do is, with the exhibition is now to situate that these people are going to vote in this particular polling station based on what they indicated. So what the Electoral Commission has been saying all along is that when you look at the exhibition, it says display the voters register so that people will come and check their names. So even before the exhibition, we ran a lot of commercials and we're saying that don't assume that the father you have registered, it means your name is in the voters register. Because the law provides that after the registration, the, all the names must be exhibited publicly at all the exhibition centers or the polling stations where people indicated during the registration that they will be voting at. So the exhibition is part of the registration uh, process. So what the Electoral Commission is saying is that until you finish that process, you will not be able to have a, re a register that is very, very uh, credible, that is very, very accurate. And the Commission has maintained that per the exhibition, we are expecting to receive certain outcomes. And those are some of the outcomes the NDC identified. Like which one? For example, they said they noticed that some names were missing, about 3,957. Mm -hmm. They mentioned that they also indicated that some, some people have been transferred illegally to certain places. Apart from that, we had many Ghanaians who also went to the polling stations where, as far as they were concerned, they were supposed to vote in that particular place, okay. but their names were not there. So all these were things the commission was expecting. So as I speak to you now, I can say on authority that all the problems that were identified by the NDC and the Ghanaians, almost about 4 million Ghanaians who went to the exhibition centers to go and check their names, all of them have been resolved. Because that's the essence of the exhibition. So, 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 so here's my follow-up on that. Could the exhibition have identified the fact that over 240,000 voters uh, who transferred their votes in 2020 had been added to the 2024 transfer list? No, the, the reason why we give the register to the parties, we give to no, them... No, 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 that's not what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. I'm asking, coach, the exhibition exercise have identified such a problem? Yes, yes, because, you no, know, before the NDC even brought the, the, their concerns, you no, know, we had a meeting with them. In some of the constituencies or the district, they had identified that the number of transferred voters they had were more than what they were expecting. And that's what the exhibition does. So okay. when you look at it, that's why we've maintained our, our responses. So that before, before the NDC came forward with this, the Electoral Commission already knew. No, we, we, that information came to us. No, no, you already knew that, you know, some 240,000 voters had, uh, who had transferred their vote in 2020, 2020 had been 2020. added to the 2024 yes, list yes. again. And we said before we met the NDC and the, they, they started complaining, we had picked the information from one of the districts. Because, you know, every district has 
the number of people who transferred in each particular year. Okay. And in this instance, we did the transfers in 2020, 2023, and 2024. So I remember one of the districts called that they were expecting about 2,000 something. But they ended up with about 4,000. And, and this is your own officer calling? No, you, our officers complain. And, you know, the NDC has a national office, national right. reps mm -hmm. who make some of these demands. Apart from that, the parties also have uh, people at the regional and the district level. So usually what happens is that when they identify a problem, you know, although the register is a national document, we also have registers for each district. Mm -hmm. And in the, in, in the general election, we have registers for each constituency. So the register for each particular constituency or each particular district, what happens is that the parties, they also have copies. And now what the EC does is that we have the list of all people who are registered in the, in the particular district. Our officers have, we have the forms we use, forms 1A and form 1C, which have the names of all the people who are registered in that particular place. So anytime you send a register to that particular district and there is any discrepancy, our officers will identify them and they will let you know that in our district we are supposed to have 80,280 mm. people on our register. Okay. But what you have given to us is less than that. So then they will do a matching. Okay. So how many of such cases were identified by your officers? No, I wouldn't be able to put a exact number, but what I know is that almost every district we had something that, uh, of that. No, nature, that's the essence okay. of the exhibition. Oh. We we display the register, we identify all the problems, mm. and the law provides that when you go through all these processes, then we, you get to the point of printing a final register, which you would then use for the elections. Okay. Doc, uh, educate me if I'm wrong. The exhibition exercise is for the public to go yes. and see their details. To go and check their details. So at what point were your officers also checking to come up with the information that they shared with you? No. Uh, during, once we, we started the exhibition, the, our officers also got to work. They had to okay. work. Because in, in our presentation, you realize that uh, we have what we call the register viewer. The register viewer, each district is able to look at the number of people who are registered in that particular district. They have all their details. So once there is any discrepancy, they're able to identify. So we've, we've been saying that we've been using this four-pronged approach to be able to ensure that we have a very credible register. Number one is that you have the, the registered voter who will go to the exhibition center to go and check whether their details are intact. Mm. Apart from that, you also have the exhibition officer. You know, we, we display the registers at almost 40,653 or so polling stations or exhibition centers. So the onus was also on each exhibition officer to ensure that the names that were supposed to vote in that particular place, all of them are intact. Mm. Apart from that, our district officers who also did the registration or they are now in charge of the districts, they had the responsibility of ensuring that the total number of people who are registered voters in the districts, they are the same numbers they have. So once there is anyone who, who is missing, then they have to check the, the source documents that were used. Mm, I see. Uh, so, so, then, so then what you're telling us is that the exhibition exercise was not only for uh, voters who are on the register to go and check and correct their details, but your own officers were yeah, also comparing. the law allows that. Comparing. Compa yes. So if even you were a voter and you don't go there mm -hmm. to go and check, our officers are getting to work on it because the law allows, the law has made... Uh, uh, provisions for that. Mm, I see. So, so then, it, it, it brings me back to the point. You mentioned one district where you were expecting 2,000, you had 4,000. 4, so. How many of such districts had you identified in the course of the exercise? On, on the basis of the petition by the NDC, you know, the NDC mentioned that they've noticed about 243,000 illegal transfers. Yes. And the commission has maintained that those were not illegal. But what happened was that in generating the data, we inadvertently added 2020 transfers as well as 2023 transfers mm. to that of the 2024. Mm. So they are not illegal transfers. Okay. They are, they are genuine transfers, but they, we added 2020, 2023. But we have since corrected. So when we are giving I the mean, final... So, so, so how come that was added? Have you identified where the problem came from? You know, it's a, it's a, the, when the software was... You know, this is how the system works. You know, when we did the 2020 registration, we also did 2023 registration. Automatically, the numbers will add up. 
Is that not so? Mm -hmm. 2024. So in 2020, 2020, we registered almost 17 million, uh, 27,000. And in 2023, we did almost 910,000. So you, it will automatically add. So in, during that generation process, the system added everything. Mm -hmm. So transfers 2020, 2023, 2024. And we have what we call absentee list. 2020, 2023, 2024. So for anyone who understands our process, you realize that these are not uh, something somebody will do and you claim that mm -hmm. or the person has deliberately done it to influence the outcome. Because right. those are legitimate uh, transfers that were done. But unfortunately or inadvertently, the commission added them to that of 2024. So the 2094 voter transferred, who transferred their votes in 2024, but their, you know, their, their, their names were missing on the absentee list have been added. All now. of them, we've, we've addressed you them. Fix that. We'll fix them. If you have fixed all the problems, what evidence are you asking for from the NDC again? So let, let me come in. This is what the commission is saying. For you to be doubly sure that your concerns have been addressed, come to the discussion table, bring your issue. Because when we had the meeting with the NDC, they showed us one of the missing names. Instantly, our IT boss, who was in that particular meeting, showed them that, oh, this person you are saying is missing from the register. The person is actually in the register. And beyond that, you know, we can provide the evidence. But when we finish with the exhibition, what we do is that we have a process where those whose names have been objected to, those whose names are supposed to be removed from the register. We go through a legal process where we have somebody we call district registration review officer, who is normally an officer of the court, usually a district magistrate, a, a court official. Mm -hmm. So what they do is that we go through that process, and those processes are about to be completed. So one, until we finish that process, we can't say we are giving you. But the commission is ready to meet all the political parties, the MPP, the NDC, all of them at the mm. discussion table to explain to you everything. So we know all the concerns, because the essence of the exhibition is to correct discrepancies, mm. and we have done that. And you have done that. When we come back, we'll put that to the test a bit more. You're watching Hot Issues, I'll be right back. My guest is Deputy Chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Dr. Bosman Asari. Doc, uh, again, thank you so much for sitting with us. Just a bit more on this exhibition exercise and how you say we'll clean uh, the exercise. We also know that um, one of the outcomes of the exhibition exercise is also to reach the register of deceased people. The NDC had posted a very large number of deceased people on the list. And uh, I want to find out from you, have you cleared that as well? No, I think uh, this one, uh, I don't know how to even put it, but let's be very clear. When you, when you talk about the voters register, every year in Ghana, we know people die. And in Ghana, I think uh, that... Uh, uh, we are looking at, is it the mortality rate is uh -huh. almost 7.6 uh, 7.6 out of every thousand people die every year. So when you look at the data, every year some people die in our country. But the exhibition has provided an avenue uh -huh. for deceased persons to be removed. So once people don't go to the exhibition centers to go and inform the exhibition officer that my family member has died and this is the evidence this is the death certificate. This is the obituary notice. This is evidence that the person is dead. There is no way. Because if we are not very careful, I remember in 20, 2019, we had an instance, or was it 2018, when we did the exhibition, some people went to remove someone's name, insisting that the person was dead, mm -hmm. not knowing the person was alive. So the law has provided a mechanism to do that. So when you look at it critically, Every year, you may have a certain number of Ghanaians who are registered voters. Right, so I mean, so what's the mechanism that the law has created to be able to read the register of... The, the law is very clear. It mm -hmm. says that once some, you know somewhere a family member has died, go to the exhibition center mm -hmm. with the death certificate of that person, the obituary notice, as well as the person's voter ID card. So those who did that, their names have been removed. But those who didn't... Those who didn't... Will continue to be on the list. And, they will continue to be on that because we don't know, we don't have that information. And it's possible in every family house in Ghana, there could be one or two people mm -hmm. who are gone and mm -hmm. their names are on the voters register. 
But the Electoral Commission cannot say, oh, we think this person is dead. So we are going to remove the name. So the Electoral Commission will require information from the public. And they must come with evidence. Because if we don't do that, we may end up having people removing the names of others. Mm -hmm. So you go through a process. You go through a process, you must submit evidence of death. Which means that, you know, at some point we should have a more um, robust way of determining that. Yes, yes. I yes. see. And it's one of the things the commission was doing with the new CI, to work closely with the birth and death registry, to ensure that we could work, engage them and have a way of removing the dead instantly. Mm. But under the current system and the, the CI-91, uh, as amended by CI-126, what the law provides is that individuals must bring evidence. The death certificate, the obituary notice, all these things must be brought to the attention of the exhibition officer. Mm. From that on, the process of removing the name will be triggered. I see. Dr. Bosman, would you agree with me that the patronage of the exhibition exercise was underwhelming? Uh, historically, exhibition patronage has, has been like that. No, but uh, this year. I want us to focus this on year this year. is not unique. Since I've been at the Electoral Commission, this year we, we did almost 29 point something uh, percent, which is one of the highest. But, uh, it's, but it's still underwhelming, no, it's, isn't it? It's something that uh, Ghanaians in general, the thinking is that once I register, I know uh, my name is there. So it's one of the things all of us, do, media, media players, mm -hmm. all of us must be involved. Right. The Electoral Commission we do, but the onus is on individuals to go and check. And I also I, think it's because historically people uh, have believed that once you register, about 99.9% .9 of the your time, name will be your there. name will be there. But it's something we need to move beyond that and still encourage people to go and check. So this is where I'm going with that. If we both admit that the exercise was underwhelming, then we can say also that a chunk of the cleaning has been based on what your officers report to you, based on we have so-so and so number, and now we, had, we have more than such a number on the register. So when officers don't report that back to you, then it means that the register for that district or that polling center remains bloated. Oh, in terms of, as for bloating, I wouldn't talk about bloating. Because when you talk about bloating uh, of a voter's register, then maybe you are saying maybe some 20% of the people are not supposed to be there. But what we do is that our officers work under operational instructions. So the commission will demand that check. Because you have the details, and that's what you do for living. Mm -hmm. and in but, this but, thing, but in the district that you mentioned, it was more than 20%. You said... Uh, there were supposed to be 2,000, and then when no, the register that one, that came... One, that was... one was more about the transfer, which okay. is not so much about uh, the job of the district. The generation was done at the head office. I absolutely mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that the difference would have to be reported by your officers. In the event, for whatever reason, your officers are not able to report back that difference to you, then that anomaly remains on the register and will be used whichever way it, it, it is intended for. Okay, let, let me put it in this perspective. For the issue we talked about, that 2,000, and it ended up being about 4,000, that one is not only the preserve of the district. Mm -hmm. That one is mainly more about the national office. But what the district, the, the district officers do is that you have the register for your district. So, and you have what we call the source documents, which is the Form 1A. And you have all those. So you have them in a pile like this. So what you do is that your job is to cross-check. And you know, at the district level, we have the district officers. There are some who work under the district officers. Beyond the district office, too, we have the regional director. And you know, when we did the registration, you gave us this particular information mm -hmm. that I registered this number. And in our registration, too, we have what we call a start of day report and end of day report. So we know the numbers you registered every day. We should give you this particular number. Mm. So the numbers that have been submitted to you from the headquarters, if there is any discrepancy, you, it is your job as a district officer to let, bring it to the attention of the commission. Which is why I'm saying <clears throat> if that job is not done, then it means the anomaly will remain on, on, Ooh, on the register without your knowledge at the head But from, from our experience, all our district officers are very good when it comes to that. And because you are not the only one who knows what the problem there. there because you've already given, you know, 
the, our processes are so transparent that the numbers, the political parties also know. But it was also an electoral officer who engaged in that, uh, you know, illegal act in Pusiga. It was also an electoral officer. So we cannot assume that all the officers are honest and they will report back to you at the head office that so and so anomaly has gone on. No, it, generally, what, this is what happens. The officers on the field, they take operational instructions from the head office, from their regional uh, directors. And certainly, you are dealing with human beings, so you are going to have one or two people who may do something differently. But the point I was making is that the parties are also aware of the numbers, total registered. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that in 2020, we gave the registers for each district to the parties. We did same in 2023. So any party should be able to know the number registered in this particular district. So if we are doing the exhibition and the commission says that oh, Asante Achim Central, oh, hoy, the number is now 60,000, the parties know that ah, in the last one, we did, even did the registration in 2023, we had 62. And we've done another registration. Why is the Electoral Commission now saying? And we have all the source documents over there well, to we, be able we, to address Which is what is happening now. What you have just described mm. is what is happening now yes. between yeah. you and the other political parties led by the NDC. Yes. But you, you, you don't seem to um, accord them the same understanding in your scenario no, right that, now. That's what, 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 what we have been saying is that the reality is that it is premature for you to make a request for a forensic audit. The reason why it's premature is that the process of cleaning the register has just begun. Oh, hasn't it ended now? No, it hasn't ended. That okay. process has just... It will only end when we are printing the final voters register. When we finish everything, we print the final voters register. So that process, that auditing process embedded in the law has just been triggered. Mm. And we are working on it. So when you ask that the Electoral Commission should do A, B, C, and D, then literally you are telling the Electoral Commission that what the law has provided, just ignore. But what the commission is saying is no, that... I don't think they have said what the law has provided. Oh, no, but literally, when you say do forensic audit, and what the commission is saying is that the audit is embedded in the process. Mm -hmm. Allow us to finish everything, and that all the concerns you are raising, when you... We will address that. And I can assure you, say on authority, that all the concerns have been addressed. But how can they trust you to do that? Oh, uh, we, don't, we don't need you to trust us as individuals. Trust the Electoral Commission as an institution. We've done it before. We and, did and, it I mean, it's the same question I'm asking. How can they, including members of the public, trust the Electoral Commission to clean up the register? No, the, that's, the, the EC has that mandate. We exist... Well, no, make, we know you have the mandate. We are no, only we, saying We that. exist to do that. And the point is that I made the point that the final register will be given to the parties. Mm -hmm. And you as an individual, you have the right to write to the Electoral Commission through the chairperson that you want to have a copy of the voters register. So the point I'm making is, assuming you know uh, this district or nationally we have this total number, you should be expecting that from the Electoral Commission. So that's why I made the point mm -hmm. that we will give the registers to the we we will give it back to the, all the political parties and even ordinary individuals who are interested in having a copy. Mm. Commission will I, make it available to you. I see. So I'm, you'll I'm be able I'm to asking, compare. I'm asking about the issue of trust again because then at that same uh, you know presentation the NDC made to you the example you had given that they had mentioned the name and your IT officers had found it. For, yeah. Yes, they also mentioned that. And they had told us here on TV3 that, yes, you had mentioned the name, but the person who was supposed to be in the greater Accra region had been taken to the Volta region. No, I think that, that issue will, will definitely meet with the parties and explain. You know, people do transfers. And when they are doing transfers, they mentioned that they saw the person in 2023. But now they can't see the person in 2024. And that when we told them the person is now in the Volta region, I think precisely Keta. The person has transferred. That's what it actually means. And when I wouldn't be able to know where you voted. For all you know, you have transferred your vote to Kumase, to Cape Coast, to another place. Mm. And when you are doing it, you don't discuss with. Well, it. Uh, so the point they were making with that is that it's an illegal transfer. No, the person no, it's has not an illegal transfer. Okay. What makes it illegal? The, the law allows for transfer. Yes, but they are saying that particular name had not transferred their vote to that, the voter. Those, these are the reasons why we are saying that 
NDC should come to the discussion table. Because mm -hmm. the commission will give you the evidence. You know, when we, we give the registers to the parties, we give to the party. Right. But when we give to the party, we still work on the register. So what you have seen, the discrepancies you have mm -hmm. seen, we, we continue to work. When will the final uh, register be I need, I need to ready? check the calendar. But I know we should, in this October, we should start the process of uh, printing the register. And we, before we will print, we will give the uh, register to each of the political parties and Ghanaians who are interested in having... Mm. And, and, and in your statement, you have said that you, uh, you are not averse to re-exhibiting the voter Re the register. register. Yes. This is different from your position earlier that you would re-exhibit... Because earlier you had said you will not re-exhibit the... No, I think in terms of this... The, the exhibition is in two forms. We have okay. the physical one, okay. where people must go to the polling stations or the exhibition centers mm. to go and check their names. Yes. And we have an on online one. Okay. So per this statement, what we are saying is that, and the online one we've maintained all along that we are still going to be having it till mm. the elections. Mm -hmm. the, so the statement says that while the commission is not opposed to undertaking another physical, physical. exhibition of the corrected PVR in over 40,000 plus exhibition centers, given the time it takes to print and distribute the PVR three to four weeks, it will not be feasible to achieve this due to the limited time to the general election. Uh, and so the commission intends to implement an online exhibition of the P PVR at no cost to registered voters. Yes, what, yes. what form will this take? Is it the, the USSD system? U USS, I think we'll, we'll come up with the form. Now, recently we use, is it the star 751, 511 or so to check, but we'll come up, we'll make an, a public so, so this will be, if I have my details, I can go and check. No, you can go It and is check. not that I would have the register and then go oh, no, and no, be no, able no. to. No, if the register is available virtually, so what you do is that you just enter the code. Then your details will come. And once your details come, it will tell you where you are supposed to vote at in that manner. Mm, I see. So, that, so there will be a form of exhibition, but it's not going to be the physical one mm. where people must go to the polling station. And as we speak now, it's still, the register is still available virtually. Mm, I see. Do you think the Electoral Commission has lost trust with the public? No, I don't think so. Because the reason why I don't think so is that in 2020, we did the elections, the, the domestic observers, including the local media, mm -hmm. international observers who came from the African Union, the ECOWAS, uh, ECOWAS European Union, they gave the commission a very massive uh, endorsement mm -hmm. of the work we did. The EU, for example, gave the Electoral Commission 95%. Uh, the same EU went to other countries in Africa. And we'll, you look at the reports, what they wrote about those countries, very, very, in per Ghana standards, very, very unacceptable. So we think that at times it depends on where uh, you are getting the information. There are a lot of, you are in the media space, a lot of misinformation a lot of disinformation, malinformation okay. in the public domain. Because anyone who has engaged us and uh, analyzes the work we do, uh, we have uh, electoral commissions around our continent who come to come and study what we do. So anyone who takes the time to understand our processes, you realize that ah, what the people are saying is not, is not the case. Mm -hmm. And we think that uh, we have one of the best institutions in our country when it comes to the electoral Commission, our processes are completely transparent. Do you know okay. that when we are going to print the ballot papers, mm -hmm. all the parties are supposed to send their agents? If you are available to send an agent, it's allowed. When we are transporting the ballot papers to all the regional capitals, uh, uh, Dambai, now our office is in Kwanta, in the Oti region. When we are going to Ho, we are going to Kumase, uh, Sekendi, Takrade, we are going to uh, uh, Goso, we are going to uh, uh, so we are going to uh, Naleregu, we are going to Bogatanga, we are going to Wa, we are going to Damungo, we are going to Tamale, mm -hmm. Sunyane, Te Techiman. When we are going to all these places, Cape Coast, the parties accompany the ballot papers. I see. And when the ballot papers get to the uh, regional of uh, re regional capitals, they go to the, the regional police armories. Mm -hmm. All the parties put their seals. So, Doc, you're this trustworthy. You're this transparent. What do you stand to lose if you heed to public call that you should subject yourself to an external audit? No, you know, uh, the reason we, we, what the commission is saying is that the law provides for an audit. 
and the it, political it party does. indeed it does but you're hiding behind the law that does not well, also we, we, we are not hiding. you're hiding behind the law that is not also opposed to an external audit during the exhibition process and so what are you telling the Ghanaian unless, people and if we unless we are saying that when we give the final registers to the parties the parties don't have the capacity to know whether the register is the right one or it's not the right one. What the commission is saying is that the law has provided a framework for reaching a final voters register. Mm -hmm. And that process, so assuming we've done all that process, okay. we've exhausted all that process, mm -hmm. and we've given the registers or the register to you as a political party, and you realize that, ah, after the final, still there is a problem then you can say, hey, the Electoral Commission has in that. Let's look at, you know, 2020, what happened? Mm -hmm. When we did the registration, we had about 520 people or so whose, we had their, we had their names all right, but we couldn't find their biometrics. We drilled down to their polling stations and we created a manual verification system for them. So the assurance I can give to you, mm. the good people of our great country, is that the Electoral Commission will do whatever is necessary, whatever is proper, to ensure that anyone who is a registered voter come December 7, 2024, you go to the uh, polling station, your name, your details will be intact. You'll be able to vote. And I want to also assure the political parties, one of our main stakeholders, that the final register will give to them. It will embody all those who are supposed to be in the voter's register. This mm -hmm. is, that's what we do for a living. And I it's see. not something we can so, fail so, so, Doc, at. You, you would agree with me that at this point, your electoral calendar is, you know, off the hinges because things happened, you know, in the beginning of the, the calendar that has changed how you're doing things a little bit. You no, tell us that. It's, it's not. We, no. This year, we front-loaded the number of our activities. Right. So, you look at 2020, around this time, we have not gotten to where... We are this year. No, no, but I'm, I'm referring to, you know, the original calendar you had oh, come yes, up with. Yes. Things have changed. Things have changed. Things have, good. So, so w what, what I'm now saying is that, look, uh, you're telling us that October, the final register should come out. The so, final, yes. So yes. let's hold you by October. Yes, by October. When the final register well, comes check up. check the date, yes. Mm, there's a date. Which means you're not sure. Oh, no, but no, it will no, be in October. October. Yes, yes. When the final register comes out in October. Do we get word from the Electoral Commission that that is the point where you will subject yourself to an audit? Oh, no. The, what the Electoral Commission, what we have maintained is that what we have in our law, the CI-91 especially, is complete. No, we it understand that. It provides that. everything. We understand. And, I'm, and I'm following up on your yes. own explanation mm -hmm. you have given to me that ha had it been that they received the final register and they were making these demands of you, then you would have exhausted the, you know, the yes. law, the yes. provisions of the law, yes. right? Yes. So I'm, te I'm asking, October has come, the final register has been given to the political parties, will you then subject yourself to an external audit? No, the, the final register, once we say the final register, what it means is that it's the final we are going to use uh, for the elections in December. And what the commission is saying, all the problems that have been identified, by the time we produce the final register, the final register will be a corrected version of, of everything, of the problems. So that we, we know, that we know because it is the work we do, we know that the final will be a corrected document. Right, so, so there so will be if, no call So if you are not subjecting yourself to an external audit now, which a lot of the Ghanaian people are calling for, then when do you plan to do no, it? If the final I register, a lot of the I, absolutely, it's not just the NDC. We know that the movement for change has added word. The, you know, the, the the scores of people who poured out onto the streets over here. We've heard from uh, Dr. Tamaklo. We've heard from uh, Justice Atuguba on the fact that it's important that you subject yourself to this external audit because one, it would either affirm. What all that you have told us today, or perhaps it would also affirm what the NDC is saying, and everybody will, will, will have itself worked out. Why, why can't you do that? The, now you're telling me that, listen, no, well, the well, final well, register is the final register. The final so, register. so when will you subject yourself to no, a, we, an the, external The commission audit? has maintained clearly that a call for forensic audit is premature. And even beyond that, we, we, we pair our procedures and the, the laws we are using to do our work. We don't think a forensic audit is necessary. And these are the reasons which we have stated clearly in our, in our response to the NDC. And even beyond the response, what we are saying is that you look at the law provides. 
So unless you are saying that we should use some extra legal means to be able to do that, we are confident in what the law provides and we are very certain that by the time we will give the register again to the political parties, they themselves will look at it. I made an earlier point, unless the parties are saying they don't have the capacity to know whether the register we have given them is the correct one or it's not the correct one. And I know the parties, the main ones, all of them have the capacity. And what the EC is saying is that all the concerns you have, we have addressed them at the appropriate time. And very likely, very soon, we are going to meet uh, with the political parties under the umbrella of IPAC. And these explanations will be made very, very clear to the uh, parties. The register is not for the Electoral Commission. It's for the good people of our country. And I think that once you know every, there is no problem with it, you yourself may not even call for uh, that audit. Because the audit is embedded. And it's good. You, you mentioned some people have called for a uh, forensic audit. Tell those people to look at CI-91 regulations, 23 regulations, 24. I don't think maybe they have read. Because if they have read it, they will know that the audit is completely embedded in it. No, I, indeed, it is. All I'm saying is that the law is also not opposed to you know, an external audit. It does not bar an external audit from happening. And and we have seen that in the past. So so then no, brings, in the past that way. No, but what is the what is the difference in the situation between now and the audit that no, was the held, commission there has held, never been an external audit of the register before. What was the happening in the lead up to the twenty sixteen election? No, you the check one your record, but the, it wasn't an you, external audit of the register. I think there was a committee that looked at the concerns expressed by I think that time it was the MPP. But there was no external audit. It, so it you looked, checked the record. At, no, I have. There and, was, there and, was, and it looked no, at the register. I, the I'm speaking to the record. So, so what, did, what did it look at? I'm no, also speaking to the record oh, I no, thought no. I knew. Then maybe check, check your files very well. Okay, so what, there, what, there were, what, were, the, what were the concerns it looked, it well, looked at? I need, I, need to, I need to clarify very well. But what hap, transpired was that I know one of the parties had a similar concerns as the NDC is raising. And the committee was set up by, headed by... Uh, the former uh, uh, judge, uh, Justice Crabb, to look at the concerns of the political parties. But there was nothing like an audit of the voters' register. Is that the case? There was because, nothing. Because I, oh, I, I also, based on the facts that I've gathered, indicates that when they had looked at it, they talked about the fact that they felt the voter register was, was credible. Voted, was credible. Yes. And, and That's what I'm saying. This is not something we may, we may have to debate. We'll agree to disagree. Yeah. I'll be right back. Don't go uh, away. Thanks for staying with us here on Hot Issues. We are still here with Deputy Chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Dr. Bosman Asari. Doc, I want us to look at the recently concluded uh, ballot order you know, exercise that was held at the Electoral Commission. I'd like to think that you know, the Electoral Commission has done some reflections on it, but it looked like you were not prepared for the exercise at all. No, we were. We were actually prepared. And the same procedure was used in 2020, and we didn't have any any issues with it. Mm -hmm. And come 2024, nothing, if it wasn't broken, why did you want to fix it? So we, uh, we engaged the parties before we started the process and we told them we we're going by the same uh, procedure. And in the middle, one of the parties raised a very strong objection. So we had to make some changes just to ensure yeah, a very peaceful True, but Doc, the, the polythene you used, the polythene bag you used definitely could not have been part of the preparation. It wasn't. It wasn't. Because the parties uh, clamored for it. They said no. No, we had a, 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 a policy that everything must be very, very transparent. Along the line, one of the parties, I think one of the rep from the NDC side said no. They thought some of the balls, one of the balls was so different. So to be able to uh, ensure the integrity of the process, let's put all of them in, in an opaque uh, box. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have any box around. And we thought that, and they themselves suggested was, that... Was, was that pleasant to the site? No, I mean, looking back... It, uh, it, it wasn't, but in that spare of the uh, time, it was the best thing to do. Because if we had not done that, there was going to be some major disagreements. And you know, we were doing it for the parties and for the good people of our country. Once the parties themselves indicated, initially one of the parties said no, they will not allow. Others said no, they won't. Then we said no. Once we will do this to ensure a peaceful process, why not? So all of them agreed and we moved on with that particular. So it's a lesson well learned. The I, I, no, I wonder what lessons you have learned from no, that. No, moving forward, 2028, God willing, 
uh, we are going to do much, much better. What will, what will much better look like? Oh, in terms of, you know, this time when we agreed with the parties, we had to change the rules in the middle of the game. Mm -hmm. So we believe that in future, we should be able to discuss and go through with whatever agreements we would arrive at. Mm -hmm. And you notice, apart from that, the independent candidates also raised some major concerns. They thought that they, are, they, are, they were paying 100000 just like the candidates of the political uh, parties. So why did we do a separate one for the political parties? Mm -hmm. Then when we finished, we did another one for the independent candidates. So all these are things the commission will discuss them dispassionately uh, uh, as a commission and we also discuss with our political parties at the IPAC level mm -hmm. and civil society to look at ways of improving. Because I think it's it, what their actions were generally very, very legitimate. Mm -hmm. Although the tradition has been that you ballot for the parties first. So mm -hmm. these are things. We, and you know, when we finish with the balloting for the main parties, well, the main parties are nine. Mm -hmm. And they were contesting for the first to nine. And generally, all of them were fighting if they could get number one. But mm -hmm. the, the independent candidates, they were battling for. They were only four, and they were mm -hmm. looking at uh, the last number. I so see. so it, they had a 25% chance of getting the while the major parties were battling, they From had a chance of 11%. But it also looked like the electoral commission wasn't in charge at all. You know, when, when you are dealing with the parties, you have to be very, very uh, strategic, very, very tactful. You know, we have two main parties and in many instances, they don't seem to agree. And IPAC is an avenue. When we meet at IPAC, you allow them to add their grievances. And this was an activity we were doing for the parties. Once they got to a point and they were expressing certain strong disagreements and reservations, the thinking of the commission was that let's allow them to express. Once they did that, in the spirit of uh, democracy, allow people to express their views. So we did that. And when they finished, we told them that on the basis of what all of them have said, this is what the commission will be doing. And we did just that. And when we finish, if you listen to the interviews that were granted by all this, they expressed satisfaction but, but in the it, process. But it, it didn't look like it. When you go back and you watch the video, it didn't look like the, the electoral commission was being strategic with the parties. It looked like the parties, um, particularly the NPP, was doing what it wants and the electoral commission could not call its director of elections to order no when when if i don't know that uh, the clip you were but at the, i was sitting uh, right yes, right were. on the high table and we noticed that what we told them initially what we started with uh the mpp was generally for it the ndc too was generally for it it was in the middle of the activity when we finished with the first you no know, the balloting was was in two phases. Mm -hmm. We had the first uh, balloting to pick who will be picking first yes. for the main for the main position on the ballot. So we did that. It was when we finished with that, then the concern came from one of the parties that they thought that the way one of the ballot uh, balls was, it was going to give unfair advantage. So we had to remove that particular ball from mm -hmm. the exercise. And they also suggested that in order to ensure the transparency of the process, we needed to put all the balls in an opaque. And, and in addition to that, whoever was speaking was not supposed to look into... No, for that into, one, that, 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 wasn't, that, that was suggested, but the commission didn't specify that that was the requirement. Well then, how, how is it transparent if, oh, no, what, if, if you, you know, can look into the box no, and no, pick? When, you when, look when into you the look bag at and it, pick. The, previous, the, the first phase of the balloting, the first phase, you could see from afar because the, the box, a certain bowl, very, very transparent from every angle. You could see from afar. But in the second one, you couldn't see from afar. And if you watch the clip, I know when they finish, the interviews that were granted by all the parties, they express satisfaction. I know the media, you always have spins. The, no, there's, there's no spin. Because we watched, we saw that, you know, there was an agreement no, that you do not look no, into. That, that one, that one, that one, that but one you was did, mentioned. But you, you didn't make clear. Uh, no, no, hang, that on. One was no, hang on, Doc. You didn't make clear that you were not accepting uh, that rule that the parties there were trying you know, to bring. You know, because you know, if you notice, if you notice, it was only the NPP and the LPG who looked into the bag. 
and the commission didn't say anything about it. So only the, you are saying they were the ones who looked inside? Yeah, they were the only ones who looked into the bag. The rest adhered to that rule, and then they didn't look into the bag. But you're here telling no, me that you had not no, we, accepted we, that, 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 that rule. That, 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 Why that, didn't that, you make it clear then that no, you can look into the bag? No, and we, we, what, we, what we agreed, you know, initially some of the parties had reservations about the use of the OPIC. OPIC. And the commission overruled their views. Mm -hmm. The MPP, the LPG, and some of them said no. They still, they wanted the transparent bow. So when we commission overruled on that, they themselves, they also expressed but, a but, lot but of But you didn't say anything about this one in particular. Do you see how it makes it look like you were conniving with the NPP? Oh, no, I think once, once people say that may be your own adroit interpretation of what happened because oh you must have heard people say that not my no, no, interpretation no, no. i've not i've not heard people saying that because it's very clear everything was captured on national tv and it wasn't possible when you look at that's why you look listening to the interviews granted by the mpp the ndc and all the other parties that were there it wasn't possible the commission cannot no we had the first process i know the first process of picking was based on the time you filed absolutely, your nomination absolutely so we went through that so it wasn't possible. That's why the commission hasn't issued the this because the processes were very, very transparent. All the parties even expressed satisfaction, uh, except that the independent candidates, as I indicated, they were of the view that they thought they should be part. Do you consider the process that took place transparent? No, generally very, very transparent. We, under the circumstance, we did what we had to do. Because initially, the procedure was that everything was going to be in that transparent uh, bowl. But as soon as the NDC raised the red flag, the commission understood their concerns and we said no. Once this is what they are saying, for the exercise to move on uh, peacefully, to, to get the buying of all the stakeholders, let's make sure that we're listening to the position of the NDC. So that was what was used. Although the MPP, I don't know if you also saw that, the MPP was strongly against that. And I believe the reason why they were strongly against that was that they were going to pick first. But we overrule. They, they express their reservations at the table, which we we we, we so, notice so, that. So it is not the case that the commission oh, no, no. is con the commission, will connive no, with no, the ruling you know, party. Uh, when you look at the job we are doing, we have we have we have a mandate. Look at the whole of Ghana, and you are about seven people. Three people have been selected to do this for the entire country. So we have a responsibility to ensure that everything is done. Uh, properly, and when you go out and they are talking about the good things of Ghana, they don't mention party A, party B. They talk about Ghana. So we, as an institution, and I don't think you, the media, will even be happy with us when you should hear that we collude with party in terms of ballot position. Mm. No. Doc, thank you for coming. My pleasure. My pleasure. Dr. Bosman Asari is deputy chairperson of the Electoral Commission. Perhaps he will return for a part two of this because there are a lot of electoral issues that need to be spoken about and you educated on. But that'll be all for this edition of Hot Issues. I'm Kemeni Amana. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.